So we're gonna start in a wide legged stance, have the feet outside, shoulder the width, and we're gonna have the toes for this first part pointing straight. Um, you're gonna spread the toes to plant the big toe into the ground, then spread the pinky toe out, boom. You can think about it as a spiral. You can really try to point the toes forward and rotate out. On the right leg, you point forward and rotate clockwise. On the left leg, you point forward and rotate counterclockwise, right? What this is gonna do is gonna help your hips get aligned with your knees and your knees get aligned with your tibia. Your tibia is the shin right here. And to control the tibia for the most part comes from the foot. So if you don't have good foot mechanics, then the muscles that's activated on the femur or the thigh right here will be changed around. And so doing squats, lunges or what have you, if you have internal rotation of your tibia or your feet, it's gonna probably cause internal rotation at the hip, which will bunch up the muscles and you won't be using the right muscles. Some muscles will be overworked and others underworked that's supposed to be turned on. And that's where you get your imbalances and injuries from. So to fix that or correct that or to have that not be an issue going later on down the line, we're gonna work on our form and build that awareness. Build that conscious awareness and then let it fall back into the subconscious. The movement you're doing already is really subconscious movement that you're used to doing and you have pains and tightness and muscle weakness because you're probably not moving with good form probably stretching but when you're stretching you're probably not stretching with good alignment for you so everyone has general alignment it's not gonna be the exact same for me as you because we have our different tightnesses and our different bone structures but in general the bases are the same so along the same direction and you may start to do this and you may realize one hip is more internally rotated than the other hip but that's what this is for, to build up that awareness of your own body, right? So, it's a wide-legged series of exercises, stretches, mobility, what you want to call them is up to you. There are specific terminology for this. This video is just to help guide you along or point you in the right direction. I'm not a doctor. Seek out professional help if it's really severe or anything like that. There's plenty of uh, good doctors on YouTube and in person. Seek them out, find them. Let's get into the video. All right. Again, earlier, while it stands, toes pointing forward, right going clockwise, left going counterclockwise. So pointing and spiraling out. And as you do this, you're not moving the foot, keeping the foot plant it into the ground and then from here you can have your hands on your hips just to start out and if you need some more support you can get against the wall or you can have your hands and hips and you can trace your hands down as we go into our wide legged forward fold right as we do our wide legged forward fold we want to make sure we are squeezing our feet to the inside so as we spiral out we're looping back in towards the center and we're creating that stability. So as we go down, our feet are active. We're bringing the inner thighs in and you might hit this point and it's like, I can't go any further. That's perfectly fine. Come back up, boom. And we show you the hands on the hips. Let's go down. You can trace the legs down and you can make sure your knees and your feet stand in line as you go down. And you just come back up, right? 
So for my beginners, don't go too far. What main things I want to focus on are the cues for the feet and the legs. And now we're going to go to the hips. So we started from the feet, toes pointing forward, feet going forward, and rotating the right one clockwise, left one counterclockwise, and we're squeezing into the center with our legs and feet, but we're not moving the feet. Then we, at the hip, we're gonna drop the hips forward. We drop the hips forward. And the biggest thing about this is trying to keep that rib cage down and shoulders roll back. All right? So, boom. Come down right there. And as you trace your hands down your leg, you can keep the shoulders rolled back to make sure you are actually getting the stretch where it's supposed to be or the mobility where it's supposed to be or the strength building where it's supposed to be, depending on how you do this exercise or movement, right? So, boom. And of course, as you progress along with this, you can add weight to it. You can do it in different variations. And I'll show you some of variations, but it's not all of the variations. As you come up, you should feel your glute medius or glute maximus to extend you up high if you come up. And as you go down, as you drop the hips forward, you should just feel it extend or excuse me, stretch or elongate as you go down. As you come up, you should feel it shorten or contract. That's what I meant to say as you come up. Boom. Just like that. If it's in the morning, take your time. At night, you're probably a little bit more warmed up from walking throughout the day, but still, take your time. All right, so that's the basic wide-legged forward fold. You can do that in many different ways. If you're doing yoga flow, mobility flow, you can incorporate this in simply by taking a wide stance or you can start in a lunge and then turn sideways and take a wide stance. The next movement or exercise I wanna show you is the horse stance. And this one, for me, I'm really tight in a run. I mean, I don't have that much strength in certain range of motions. And so, me personally, I shorten up my stance. And this one, you can point your toes out a little bit more. Point your toes out is so much that your knees can still follow in between the big toe and the pinky toe. So what I mean is, for me, it's about right here. My horse stance is about right here, right? And as I go down, my hips are dropping forward, my rib cage is down, my shoulders are rolled back, boom, just like that. And so what I really want you to know is I want you to pay attention to are your knees drooping in like this to where your Achilles or your arch, not Achilles, but excuse me, your arch, are they collapsing? Or are you keeping that outwardly rotated feet that's pointing forward and the right one going clockwise, left one going counterclockwise? Are you keeping that same feel where you build that muscle up in your foot, right? It's gonna take some time if you right here with the toes to get right there, but that's okay. So this is where your knees should be in between the big toe and the pinky toe on both legs, right? And so you can just practice on going up, inhale, and exhale, come down. It doesn't have to be super deep. You can hold this right here and it will do a lot for you depending on what level you're at. And again, you can always progress this, make this a little bit harder. You can grab weight. You can try to pick somebody up, play basketball in the stance, martial arts, or something along those lines, right? You can practice walking outside like that. You can just go sideways. 
if you're not at the point where you can move your whole entire body in this stance, that's completely okay. You can just move your hips left to right. And this gets in, into the archer squat or the Cossack squat, right? So the archer squat or the Cossack squat is something along these lines. The Cossack squat, you'll be low to the ground, you're shifting your hips side to side, low to the ground. The archer squat, you're coming up, boom, and you're coming down just like that, and you come back up. And then you go to the other leg, you come back up. And so if you want to do archer squat, you do need to spread your legs a little bit more. And as you spread your legs a little bit more, again, make sure your knees and toes track. So, boom, my knees are facing out, so I'm gonna turn my toes out. So you see how this knee is facing out, but I have my toes facing in? That's a no bueno for right now. Maybe other school thoughts may think it's good, but for me, I wanna keep it safe and keep it aligned. And because again, you know, we keep good alignment. And I'm not a doctor, but I learned from physical therapists and others who have more education than me and certifications, but that doesn't mean a whole lot if I'm not continuously, continuously learning and trying things out myself and make sure it's safe. So we're gonna keep it safe so you can keep going, All right? So boom, come down. This is as far as I can go right now without getting warmed up while I start for a walk or jog. I can go a little bit deeper. And as I do more of these reps, you can see that I'll get a little bit deeper each time, each time. And so one thing when you build up this new mobility or new range of motion, you want to be able to control it. Because when you go back to your respective sport or what have you throughout the day or throughout the weekend, you're gonna feel like you're not used to that range of motion and so you do need to stabilize it by controlling the full range of motion, maybe coming down and pausing right here. Boom, pausing right there. And then coming back up, full contraction, right? Boom, full range of motion will be more acid grass or, you know, butt to heel almost, butt to calf muscle. But for right here, you're fine. And what you can do to get that full range of motion, you can grab a chair, which I have right here. And you can elevate the floor up, bring the floor to you. Again, start in the same way that you would in the regular horse stance or archer squat or coastside squat or wide legged stance. Just come right there, boom. Remember, toes going forward, and out, right foot clockwise, left foot counterclockwise. And we still squeezing the legs to the center and spreading the toes out, right? So boom, just like that. As you move your knee forward past your toes, the movement is initiated by your hips, not your knee. So what I mean is push your foot into the ground and spread the toes and make sure that heels press into the ground as well. Still squeeze to the center. And then drop the hip forward. And then just move your knee forward. As much as you can take, don't go too extreme. Ease into it, take your time. Make sure you do both sides. And each side may be a little bit different. That was my ankle popping. But um, because my muscles and foot tight, but working on that, always working, always working. Um, even when I'm resting, sometimes it's just working. So, it may have the floor elevated, but you're still not able to get that ass to grass range of motion uh, with your legs wide. So what you can do, you can bring the outside leg that's on the ground, that's not on the elevated surface, you can bring it in a little bit more and then you can come in. Remember all the cues, and you may have to bend this leg a little bit, but that's completely okay. And then come back up. 
Again, keeping this hip right here dropping. Boom, you're coming back up. As you can see, I'm not completely ass of grass, but working on it, building it, getting there is the progress, is the journey. That's what's important. That's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching.